Hi, welcome to Everything About the Scores with Danny Jollis. My name is Danny Jollis. Today is uh, Tuesday, April 26th, uh, and that's how we start. Thank you so much for being here. Um, last week, great episode. This week, even better episode. I, I did, um, I was so excited last week, I forgot to say like the basic shit that you're supposed to say at the beginning. And then afterwards, I was like, oh yeah, you're supposed to say these things. And I used to give this speech all the time, but it's like, if you if you like it, like, just subscribe. We don't have a Patreon or anything like that. Just subscribe and rate and comment and like little stuff like that. It sounds dumb, but like it factors into the algorithm so heavily. So if you like this, just do that right now and then you, you're done. And then you get to just move on with your life. For those of you who have never listened to the podcast before, we talk about sports, um, but it's all the stories around sports. So it's nothing that happens on the field. So if you watch a ton of sports, it's different than everything else you listen to. And if you don't watch sports at all, you should be able to keep up. 99% of the time. I feel like I do a pretty good job, but every now and then I lose people. Get involved. A lot of people messaged me stories for this week. Loved it. Can't encourage it enough. Uh, just like email, you can email me, danny at dannyjaws.com. You can hit me up on Instagram, Twitter. Just send me stories that you like because it does help because I don't watch everything, everything that happens. And every now and then someone sends me something. There's a story today that comes kind of from somebody. They hit, the, they hit close to one I was going to do. And I was very impressed. Joining me. On the side, running everything, keeping us going. No a cop for everybody. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hello, good sir. Good to be, good to be back. Hey, Excited. Buddy. Good hey, to man. see you. Good to see you too. Um, and with that said, we uh, sometimes have a guest, sometimes we don't. Today we have ourselves a guest, and she's a great one. Aww. She, you would know her from her special La Vie and Roads on Amazon Prime. She's also just a lovely human, and as the siren goes by. There's no other way to bring her to this to the couch. Erica Rhodes, everybody. Yeah. Aw, thank you. What an honor. Oh, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you for being here. You seemed uh you you thought I was joking when I said this was a sports podcast, which I think is speaks to my energy. <laughs> <laughs> And people are like, there's no way he actually Yeah, I was like, sports. I don't know if this is really a sports podcast. It's so much about sports. Really? Yeah. But are you a way. big sports person? I'm a diehard sports person. You are? Yeah. See, I didn't know this about you. I don't give off the vibe, but then if you pay attention to my comedy, you'll notice I'm constantly dropping sports references. Oh, wow. And a lot of people don't even like spot them because I just, you just don't... don't give off the vibe. Yeah. But I do. I love sports. Wow. It's the best. Can't recommend it enough. Before we get into your sports journey, <laughs> before we yes. get into your sports journey, we were talking about it ahead of time, and I was like, let's do a quick sidebar, because we try to keep it as focused on sports as we can. Don't let Noah constantly panicking about the cameras. Uh, yeah, he looks like he looks like he's looking. I've gotten used to it, but okay, yes, okay. I, have a, I apologize. I have a baseline stress level that I just exist at, but it's just were me you checking. just making sure they were on. It's yeah, the yeah. little stuff, making sure they're little. recording, make sure the angle okay. looks good. Stuff I've already checked. It's uh, yeah, <laughs> you want to get used to it. Just throughout it, you'll just see him kind of like move really Looking quickly around. and suddenly, like everything is broken. And you just okay, yeah, I, I take it in and now I, I lets me know we're doing okay. well. And see, now I'm more aware of that. <laughs> no, no, but that's a good thing. It really is. I mean, I would rather have him checking than not checking, truly. True, you know, I, I got I'm checking your audio every second that you're doing this. Whoa, I'm in charge of audio. That's I'm good. not checking anything. That's I'm good. Just sitting here. And that's all we need from you. Okay, good. You did, um, you did. So we were talking about it ahead of time. Other than, so when you arrived, first off, I think I bought your coffee machine from you. Yeah, that we deal made went a down. Deal. We made a deal. We made a deal. But then on top of that, um, you did mushrooms last night. Yeah, and and just to say, I don't. That's not normal for me. To sure. do, I don't do anything really. But then you, I barely drink. That's interesting. I drink a yeah. ton. Oh really? Not a ton, but I drink. Yeah, I drink. That's my. I almost thing. never drink. I don't smoke pot. I don't do anything. I had never done anything mm. until the pandemic. I never. I, I only drink. Yeah. So I drank. I was like, love drinking. Drinking's the best. Mm -hmm. I'm so good at. I'm such a good drunk. Such a good drunk. So I was like, this is good. I don't need to ever fix, like change this. Yeah. Then the pandemic. Three months in, I was like, okay, I'm an, uh, now I'm an alcoholic. Acid. Yeah. Oh, oh. I just was like, I'm an alcoholic. Now I have to mix this up. I can't right. be sober through this thing, but I definitely can't just like drink every day. Yeah. So I tried pot. And now I'm on the pot train. Oh. And the pot train, I will say, you know, as a kid, you hear about the gateway drug thing. And you're like, what are we talking about? Yeah. It does quickly. You are quickly like, all right, what else is out there then? Really? So, so you, pot works for you? Because it just... It, no, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't? I don't care for it, really. 
I don't care for it at all. It's fine. It doesn't touch drinking. Drinking is so much more fun for me. Yeah. I know exactly. To me, they're both depressants. So I, I'm the coffee addict. Mm-hmm. I like an upper. I mean, I do coffee too. Yeah. You know, you can just do all of those things. You could do all of them if mm. you wanted to. It's a real problem. I have to work on it. I, but so then you, but I've been talking about doing mushrooms for a long time. I think I'm uh, at the stage right now. Yeah. And I think this is a classic me stage. I think I've researched it now 700 times. Oh, you, oh, you're a big lot of Googling researcher. about it. A lot of figuring out how I feel about it. Really? I was thinking about it for, I've been thinking about it for a while. Because mm-hmm. everybody's like, do shit. Dude, yeah, yeah, change yeah. Your life, a little a bit of your mind. Deal. You don't even know who you are until you do shrooms. Yeah, yeah. You know, people talk about it like it's like it's Coachella, and so I like I I hand in hand almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, same idea. They're like, no, once you go to Coachella, you live. Then you know what fun is. Like, yeah. All right. And so people have been pushing me, and then I did this show maybe like a month ago, mm-hmm. and this guy they had free samples of what I thought was weed in the back, mm. and then the guy was like, "Oh no, this is mushrooms." Oh. And it was like a little sample, and I was like, "Oh, I've never done it. I've researched it a bunch." Yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, yeah." He's like, "Oh, cool. You've been researching." I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Okay." And then I did my set. Set went well. Oh. Endeared myself to the man. Approached me afterwards. Gave me a full candy bar of mushrooms. Whoa. That now I just have in my house. Oh, you haven't done it yet? No, I'm too afraid. So this is this, that's where I'm at. That's why I was like, I'm very interested. In, Interesting. In... Yeah, I I did it once ever before, and I think it was too small of an amount that it didn't. I don't think it had much of an effect. Mm-hmm. And then last night I did a, a little, and I also didn't feel anything. So then I did a little more, and then you really felt it. I really felt it, but I was I'm not good at relaxing. Mm-hmm. So at first it just sent me into sort of a panic. Like I was like, I I'm feeling weird. I don't like this. Uh-huh. And then I was with a couple friends and they were like, you just have to like not worry and relax and just like, you know, just like zone out a bit. And and then I was like, I was kind of texting on my phone and that was bad. So you have to get off your phone. Oh, interesting. You have to like kind of be in the moment and like walk around. And then there was a couple moments where I felt really great. And then I kind of just like left. And But I honestly, I think I have a weird brain because I think a lot of drugs that people really like, I it doesn't something's off about it i get it, it made me feel a little bit anxious i feel bad every time i talk to somebody who loves like the weed people and they're like and hasn't your life changed and i'm like I, I like it it's fine yeah like that's the best the grade i can give it it's, i think it's if you're fine. a little neurotic those drugs almost just make you more anxious i also like can work on drug i can work like a work drinking right you can't work on weed you just no. sit no same with mushrooms i think you just kind of like zone out you yeah. kind of go like out of it i don't know if i need help with that but there was one good song that came on that hit you that well, well well what happened was i heard so this was a cool moment i heard a song and at the beginning of the song it reminded me of another song and then i had to hear that song it was like it was like I have to hear this mm-hmm. song, guys. <laughs> and I told that I was like, "You guys, you know this song," and no one knew it. But finally, we figured out what it was, and it was a Stroke song. And now I'm forgetting which one it was, of course. But when we turned that, I think it might have been. Oh God, I wish I remember what Stroke song it was. But when it came on, it was like, "This is all I need. This song right now." Wow. And then I felt really relaxed. Mm-hmm. But but I had this like weird like obsession with certain things like i have to hear this right now or i have to do this right now and i don't think that's what what, it's supposed to make you feel i think it's right i have no clue i don't know i I don't don't know if there's a right way but let's get refocused did you play sports growing up sports um i i was a very into ballet so i was not into sports that counts um that's just that's a it's a physical activity there's competitions True. Auditions. It's auditions. And um, I, like- I did, but then when, when I quit ballet, I joined the track team. Okay. And I got really into running, mm-hmm. and I competed a couple times, and I, I ran two half marathons. That's very impressive. So I, I was like sporty. Jess. But, oh, look at that. Just ran the LA marathon. Wow, that's impressive. It was very impressive. That's mm-hmm. very cool. It was very cool to see. Yeah. It destroys your body for a week. Yeah. Like you see it and you're like, oh, this is so unhealthy what it does to you. Like, I know. There's I no thinking, human should do this. It's thinking, insane. It might destroy your body like later as you get older too. Like if you keep running. That's running my fear. My tough. fear is my knees. Yes. Because I've pulled my and hammies. Hips. I've pulled my hammies and I'm like, I don't want to go through Ouch. that ever again. But then yeah. 
I don't know. I saw her. I will say I was a little inspired. And there's a chance I try it for it next year. You should. Why not? I used to love running it. And I will say I just seeing you. her do it and be like, I can do this. And committing to it and like the long term. Should we get a massive group of comics together to run the LA Marathon? I would do it. That would be fun. That could be high I fun. would do it. Yeah. This could be a thing. All right, I'm down. Based around this podcast? I mean, it's pretty... pretty and then everyone has to podcast after. Everyone has to podcast yeah. after. <laughs> oh, Jez, like, got in the car. I mean, because I had to pick her up. I also had COVID when she did it. <gasps> so oh, I... No. I was fine. But um, she... <laughs> so I had to get her... Like, I wasn't able to, like, support her. Yeah. I couldn't leave my car. And so I, like, oh, no. had to, like, pick her up and then just see... Like, just her getting in the car and being like, oh, my God, what did I just do? Like, the the shock of, like, what did I just do to my body? Right. Really hits you hard. But my dad's a... My dad's an Iron Man, if you want to get oh, really Oh, really? Crazy. Wow. Yeah. But you ran two half marathons, which is nothing to sneeze at. Half marathons are hard. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Those thanks. Are, she did the half marathon, too. Oh, and then yeah. she just was like, let me just try to... I did one illegally, like I just ran it without being registered. It was in Boston. It was my hometown and I was in high school. Mm -hmm. So I, my friend and I joined halfway through and we ran the second half. So you didn't run a half marathon then? You ran a half of a half? No, no. We ran a half of, it was the Boston Marathon. Oh, it was the full marathon you ran half of It was the full marathon, but I didn't, we didn't register. We were just like running it. Mm. And then the second one was the New York half marathon and I officially joined it and did that. That's great. Did you start comedy in New York? No. I didn't think so. Okay. Here. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Such shame. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> We're more conversational on stage. That's something. That's true. Very conversational. We're more conversational on stage. They got more punchlines. We're more story We go oriented. back and forth. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. I think I should spend a little time in both. That's my I two think cents. you're right. I think you're right. Do you watch any sports? <sighs> no. Not at all. No, I really don't. I've been to a couple baseball games. What'd you think? I liked that you're outside. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> under the sky. You are under the sky. And um, once in a while, you know, if I was with a friend, they would explain what was happening. Uh huh. And I then I get kind of into it a bit. That's what you know? I. That's what I think I do best <laughs> in the world is I think I'm very good at making sports, like explaining why you should care. Right. Baseball's the hardest. Regular season baseball is tough to get somebody to care about. It's mm. a lot of not moving around. It is. It is. It's the hardest one to be like, this game mad. Because it's like NBA playoffs. Like, I can tell you about every one of these games and get you involved. Yeah. And you get excited. But it's like, I mean, I mean the players are barrel, are like. It's how I could tell I really liked a guy when he, when I, when I thought I was getting into baseball for a minute. Jess, you know, that's Because he was explaining so it. And I was just like, yeah, tell me more. Mm -hmm. Like, this is so interesting. Mm -hmm. And then realized, um, oh, no, I just like that he's talking to me. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. When I first started dating Jess, she was like, So into Teach it. Teach me about it. Like, now I want to learn. And like, was yeah. super into it. And then as we've dated, just the the facade <laughs> has slowly fallen. And now she's just like, I could give two shits about your stupid teams. <laughs> I think that's yeah that is natural she just like could care less i like watching tennis and i always thought that tennis would have been my sport of choice if mm -hmm. i you know had a sport to choose it's a great sport to play it's it's a great sport to pick up it's fun to watch so tennis did a real ad campaign during covid that i thought was hilarious they were doing this ad campaign where they were like hey you know what's covid safe tennis and that oh. was like the ad it was them being like Guess what? We're still here. We're perfect. <laughs> Six feet apart, no worries. Outside, yeah. you got it. Tennis. Wow. They were just advertising the sport of tennis. It was wild. That's funny. It was very, it was a wild time to see a sport advertise itself. Yeah. As like a thing. And they really went for it. And they did have a good point. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah. It was one of these things you'd watch and you're like, I should go play tennis. It is like one of the sports. It's like so weird. It's like who's who's the publicist that's just representing tennis? You know, somebody, like yeah, in oh. general, like they're like we're just gonna. Somebody out there was like, we have a moment. Them yeah. and golf. Golf also came out, and they were yeah, like, golf is hey, super safe. We couldn't be any safer. Yeah, golf. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right. It is very safe. I mean, it's. Uh, I even did golf cart shows during the pandemic. I did a show at a country club for golf carts. Oh. Yeah. Wow. 
That's brutal. It was actually okay. It was better, better than, than cars a car. I was because say. you can hear them. They're just sitting. But but what was funny about it is they're acting like this is safer than a normal show. There's no. <laughs> yeah. you're, there's nothing there. They're just in golf carts. I mean, this is all of the thing. It was like golf being safer, and you're like, we're all out here though. We're all yeah. next to each other. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Ugh. It was really golf funny. course show. Brutal. Yeah. I've done a lot of shows at country clubs. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're interesting, huh? Because they're all rich people. They're rich. Yeah. You're dealing with rich whites. Yeah. Which you never really love. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe my least favorite audience out there. Yeah. Those rich old whites. The Oof. rich ones, yeah. The richer, the they can be bad. They can be bad. Though the golf cart show is surprisingly good, I have to say. That was a good one. I've had some very good shows at country clubs. Yeah. I've had okay. some very good shows at country clubs. And yet, well, listen, we could talk about stand-up comedy all day. We're, this isn't why we're here. It's not why we're Apparently. here, Erica. <laughs> and with that energy and enthusiasm being brought to the show, let's hit the theme song and let's go. You're a number one fan, so you know the stats. Heard all the pundits talking, so you know enough of that. Maybe it's time to hear some crazy folks chat about all the other stuff that's behind the net. But maybe you don't care about playing ball And you want to hear the gossip whether big or small Maybe it's time to hear some funny folks talk about what goes on when the batter don't walk Maybe you'd like to hear a little more Maybe you don't even care about sports Either way, go on and buckle up your shorts Cause this is everything but the scores with Danny Jollis And welcome back from the theme song. Erica, your thoughts on the theme song? Really good. Really catchy. Thank you. Yeah. It's done by Zach Weber, by the way. And we are also uh, doing a... Yeah, I'm going to officially announce... We're, we're doing open submission on theme song. I want to change it up every like couple... Ep- if, you, if you write one, we'll use it. Probably. I want to switch it up. We've had the same one for a while. I think it'd be kind of fun. If you're listening and you want to make it, we'll do it. We'll shout you out. At Zachary Weber is who makes the one that's been with us since day one. Erica, <laughs> our first story. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, there was so much in that. Sometimes I'll I'll say I anytime I have to like plug or do a thing that's like genuine. Yeah, I get very. Your voice goes high. I go very high. Yeah. Well, I go high. Erica. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I use that. Tr- I do that. You know, like you do certain things on stage, and then all of a sudden yeah. you're like, oh, and now I do it in life. Right. Like at a certain point, that's I've like a just a. That. A, that's a bullshit inflection I'll do on stage if I'm like yeah. trying to sell a joke and it isn't working. Is I'm like yeah, let me let me hit it, let me go a little higher. Yeah, you know berries. Yeah, and then it's like oh now it works. Now but it then works. in real life it starts going in there. Our first story comes from the world of boxing. Hmm. Someone just won a big thing. Someone did just win a big thing. Yeah, I I actually saw that. Tyson Fury won his final fight. Before he inevitably comes. The only reason I know that is because I was talking to a guy who was like, I have to go watch the fight now. Mm -hmm. And then we (laughs) talked after and he was seemed in a good mood, but he didn't say anything about the fight. And I was like, I wonder if the guy won. His guy won. This guy did win. Yeah. This guy did win. Tyson Fury was his retirement match. He'll be back in two years. Yeah. Uh, How it goes. Fun fact about boxing, yeah, it's a, it's all bullshit, and we're all lying to ourselves. But it, <laughs> but it's a way to make money in two years because he can be like, I'm coming out, and everyone's gonna be like, yeah. We knew he would. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Of so course. it's it's all a lie. He's a he's a very good fighter. Doesn't love the Jews, but other than that, Tyson Fury, but he doesn't care for the Jews. A okay, bit. Eh, you can't win them all. You can't win them all over. But this one actually comes from a man you might have heard of named Mike Tyson. I've heard of the guy. I've heard of Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Big shot. Big shot. Yeah. Youngest heavyweight champion of all time. <laughs> somebody um, somebody slapped him? Close. Very close. Yes. Mike Tyson got himself. A, this is, if you don't know sports, the only thing you need to know for this story is. Um, headlines. Is what? I just know headlines. Yes. So this, this, this trended. Yeah. Because I was like, this is pretty wild. But Mike Tyson was. So if you don't know sports, Mike Tyson, youngest heavyweight champion of all time. Uh, maybe one of the, maybe second to Muhammad Ali as far as fame. Mm. like household notoriety yeah a guy who was really aged well i would say he was known as like a real loose cannon back in the day went to jail in the middle of his career not good stuff but it was really aged into like doing broadway i mean one man broadway show i mean the guy is really mature he has an adult swim cartoon he's aged well yeah he was on a jet blue flight 
Yeah, right. <laughs> somebody slapped him. No. Somebody that's was not, a... No- <laughs> that's what I read in the headline. The headline said, someone slaps Mike Tyson. And I'm just like, what? And I didn't read the rest. He didn't... The, the guy didn't slap Mike Tyson. Oh, okay. So basically, the footage came out... It came out slowly. So the initial okay. footage was... It just said, Mike Tyson beats the shit out of some guy on a jet fl- oh, flight. I didn't see that. And we that all were happened. like, that can't... I mean, he's a walking weapon. Yeah. He can kill you <laughs> so yeah. easily. Yeah. And you see him wailing on this guy. Oh, like, boy. Like, beats the shit. I've never seen a fight on a plane before. Oh, my God. Like, a real one. I don't know if you have. No. I've never seen a real one. Yeah, I see it online all the time, but I'm yeah, like, no. never. Never once. Never once. No. I've always been enough never. of the docile no. plane rides. Yeah, same. Same. I hate. Have you ever flown private plane? Never. I did one time. Really? I hated it. You did? Worst experience in my life. Why? Scary. Oh, immediately oh, you're like, oh, small? this is why they all die. This is why people die all the time. I don't think I'll ever fly on a private plane. Why? Because it was Whoa. so small? It's so small. You it's feel so, everything? Just everything. You're just, there's at least oh, one man. time and they're like, oh yeah, it's part of flying private. It's at least once a flight, just a hard jostle. Oh, How many that's people scary. It? it was like me and, me and two others. And Who then, are you oh, going with? Kinda, a famous person. Oh, just I, a famous person. <laughs> I don't know if I want to... I, I don't know yeah, if I right. want to say who the person is because it was, but it was, I was opening for somebody. He offered me a ride back yeah, yeah. on his private plane. I was like, that's incredibly nice. I will absolutely take you up on it because my whole life I've been like, I'm never going to fly on a private plane. And then now you'll never do it again. Never do it again. <laughs> absolutely goes away. Don't recommend it. Okay. Nobody should fly private. It's insane. Just fly first class if you're rich. Okay. Um. So yeah, he beats the shit out of this guy. Oh the guy's God. name was, um, what's his name? I got his name. Melvin Townsend was the name of the guy. The oh. third. Really? Respects to the first and second. Melvin. Not Mel- a lot of Melvins these days. Mm-hmm. You don't see a lot of Melvins not these days. Not a lot of Melvins. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Maybe because it's the worst name ever. Yeah. Every time you, you meet a Melvin, you're like, that's like, that's like a, per, that's like a name that if I saw in a script, I'd be like, treat your audience intelligently. Exactly. You know There's what I mean? There's no Melvins. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Let's let's or write a realistic. It could story. be a cartoon character, Melvin. Mm. Melvin next door, the next door neighbor named Melvin. Ooh, that's good. Right? Yeah, that's a good one. Is that a, is that a real thing or is that no? You just that, made that I'm up? just picturing in a cartoon. That show. Melvin would be next door. Melvin would definitely be next and door. An annoying neighbor. He's a little Melvin. annoying. Yeah. He's very nosy. Up oh, here's Melvin. Yeah, here's Melvin, and he comes in hard. <laughs> like, yeah. I got a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, exa- that's exactly what I pictured. Uh, yeah, no, that's a Melvin. <laughs> Uh, this Melvin appears to be the worst human on the planet. Because basically, initially, everybody was like, Mike Tyson's the worst. You can't punch. You cannot punch people, period. Better yet, if you are a professional puncher of people. Yeah. Um, But then footage came out of this guy annoying the shit out of Mike Tyson. Mm. Just driving him nuts. Being like, dude, it's Mike Tyson. Like this kind of stuff. Oh, no. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Like finally, like, finally Mike Tyson was like, I get. Because I, by the way, Mike Tyson flies a lot. I've seen Mike Tyson twice in an airport. Really? Mike Tyson flies Mm -hmm. all the time. Now, granted, he's one of the most recognizable humans. You would think he would fly private. He's smart like me. Yeah, yeah. He knows better. He doesn't want to do that. But he's a very recognizable human. He does have a yeah. massive face tattoo. Yeah. So no you're, kidding. You're, Masks weren't exactly helpful at all for him. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the mask thing is great if you want But to. so what warranted the, the punching? So he's he's doing this, doing yeah. a lot of this guy, this guy, this guy. Literally yeah, yeah. out of his seat doing it. Oh, like no. another guy. And his buddy's filming him. Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, God, just the worst. Stupid. Then Mike Tyson finally is like, okay, I'll give you a selfie. Okay. If like, you shut up. If you'll shut up. Um. Takes a selfie photo with him, continues to go, and then at some point, like we don't know exactly what prompted it. Yeah. But Mike Tyson snapped, and off the footage, it, it's fun when the internet flips on an issue. Yeah, mm. that is fun when they're one. They think one guy's wrong, and mm-hmm. then they're like, actually, actually, he's- everybody switch team Tyson. <laughs> Everybody was like, "You got to punch this guy in the face." Right. I mean, sometimes you got to punch a dude in the face. Harper, yeah. if we can't stay, oh my gosh, okay, gosh. <laughs> rogue dog now. Um. Yeah, Mike Tyson beat the shit out of this guy. But what happened that the internet switched? The footage came out of the guy being annoying. But how annoying was he? Annoying enough 
that the entire internet was like wow. insanely obnoxious. Insanely really? obnoxious. Like he, like he wasn't like standing right behind his seat, being like, "Oh, it's Mike Tyson." Look, mm-hmm. uh, look, oh, oh look. My like God. so obnoxious, cartoonishly annoying. Yeah. So then Mike Tyson punched him. Punched him. And then did Mike Tyson have to leave the plane? <laughs> or did they? Did they? The land guy the definitely plane? did. Oh, the guy did. I think they had already taken off when it happened. So did they have yeah, to land I, the plane? They did. They did. Uh, no, I think they took the rest of the flight because I think everybody in this section backed Mike Tyson was like, "No, he had to punch this guy in the face." We, we all <laughs> we've been asking for this guy to be punched in the face. Like we really wanted this guy punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody could punch him in the face, please could please, it be Mike please. Tyson. Uh, yeah, that and if is anyone's so gonna punch him, funny. I mean, I do think I like that's one of the best ones. The Hangover, where he's like, he still got it. But like, I do imagine if I saw Mike Tyson punch someone, I'd be like, hey, he still. Yeah, because I mean, you do see him throw these punches, and you're like, he. It's just a different speed the way they throw punches. Mm-hmm. Like he couldn't just punch him once, and that would shut him up. He had to keep punching him. He, well, mm. listen, you're asking some great questions, but I also think that he. <laughs> I don't I feel like one big punch would be like get the idea for across. sure. He's like, knocked shut out. Shut up. He's knocked out heavyweight champions with one punch. So I do. Yeah, but this also, guy doesn't need the heavyweight champion. He just needs to be right. punched in the face. It's a Melvin, Hi. you know. So it's a Melvin yeah, level of punching. Of course, his name was Melvin. He's yeah. the most annoying man on earth. He's also, by the way, has a criminal history, including, and I think do think this is weird: fraud, grand theft, burglary, trafficking, stolen property, and possession of controlled substance, which was oxycodone. So, okay, got a little bit of a rap sheet. I'm not your judge off a rap sheet because, for the so, record, Tyson also has a rap sheet. But Mike Tyson didn't get in trouble for this. Because everyone well, wanted. Him. Well, the guy has, um, the guy has hired an attorney, oh. who released a statement saying our client is a big Mike Tyson fan. When Mike Tyson boarded the plane, he became overly excited. That is the that is that's the statement. That's the whole he, statement. That's the statement so far that TMZ has. It's just like he became overly excited and he didn't deserve to be punched in the face. He definitely deserved to be punched in the face. I think Mike Tyson's going to lose some money over this. Yeah, but it'll be fine. But it'll be fine. Yeah. He'll like, lose like ten grand or something. Uh, okay i wonder how much 20 grand i don't know 100 grand i wonder if there's a i mean like is there a world where you can be so annoying that you genuinely deserve to be punched is going to be an interesting legal battle well i feel like that's (laughs) what's been happening already with the um slap on the oscar night it's going to be like everything's going to be this is like another slap yeah this well that's what i read it as i was like oh someone else thinks they can punch them but then this is no. different if it, if the guy was annoying the guy was annoying and it was mike yeah. tyson doing me and yeah i didn't realize it was mike yeah, <laughs> yeah it was... well i knew it was mike tyson but i thought someone's i read it as someone slaps mike tyson that was the headline I, that was the headline i read i don't think the guy someone... ever physically touched mike tyson i think he was being annoying and then mike tyson just finally snapped i see and when he snaps he beat Some the guy the photo of the guy really... the guy was yeah got hit good mm-hmm. the guy got hit good it's a different story than the Oscars that you can't correlate. You can't compare. No. No, Chris Rock made one joke. Yeah, I, no, not, you, you can't compare. I, I, it's so funny how like quickly I want, I like wanted to make a state, like a joke about it. And then like yeah. within two hours Five after it happened, jokes. I was like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Nobody needs my take on this thing. Yeah. I'm just going to say the same thing. Everybody else is saying. Everyone said kind of the same thing. Yeah. You're not allowed to punch people in the face. Yeah. With my, was my statement. That was your statement? Yeah, you can't slap people. Yeah. That's my official statement. Unless it's Mike Tyson. Unless it's Mike Tyson, you're being that <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Unless someone's being really annoying and his name is Melvin. Unless your name is Melvin. If your name is Melvin, <laughs> you always you basically live in the be. purge. Yeah, it's the purge <laughs> through your world. There are no laws for you. There are the, the, <laughs> you have no protection. People are allowed to kill you. It's a way to do it. <laughs> the fact that Purge has become such a big movie franchise really is stunning to me. Yeah. Every day I wake up and I go, the Purge. People Every day love it. you wake up and you just think about the Purge. I think about the Purge and M Night Shyamalan being the best director on the planet. That's all I do. Is that the director <laughs> of the Purge? Thoughts. Those are my morning thoughts. Is that the director of the Purge? <sighs> no, we are. Who is it? Who is the director of the Purge? I have no clue. Okay. Do you know? Uh, no. No. But who, is, who do you think's the best director? M. Night Shyamalan. Okay. Sixth Sense. We'll get into it. Okay. Mike Tyson punched the guy on the plane. We'll be back okay, with the next that story. Was the story. That was the story. <laughs> oh, hey there! During this break in the action, I just wanted to throw out there that this is the perfect opportunity to write a comment or subscribe or if you're listening, you can just uh, give us a rating and a thing, whatever you want. Just this is the moment where during this break, since we don't have a Patreon or anything, this is the moment to do something like that. It'd mean a lot. All right, back to the action. 
Welcome back to the show. Here with Erica Rhodes. Erica, why is it called Lovian Rhodes? Oh, interesting that you should ask me that. <laughs> um, it's based on the Edith Piaf song, La Vie en Rose. And oh. then I did like a funny wordplay, La Vie en Rhodes, which is life of roads. But it also has, has another connotation, which is like the song is kind of about seeing life through rose colored glasses. Oh. So it's trying to see the the, the positive side a lot of, of the struggle. Yeah, there's a bunch of meanings. Thanks for asking. It's my absolute pleasure. Yeah. And pulling back the curtain, that was a thing that she said nobody ever asked her on podcasts. And I said, in the middle of us talking about how we hate talking about stand-up comedy on every podcast yeah, we do. Yeah, exactly. Hate. I'll avoid it with everything I can. We don't like we don't talking like it. about it. We don't like talking about it. It's, it's, it's boring. Yeah. Our next story. Um <laughs> You gotta get used to the inflection. Our next story. Um, <laughs> uh, I like the segues of this. Yeah, I mean, it's you're not good, good at the segues. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think I just come in hard. Yeah, just the There's hard. There's no no. Segues. At some point, you just have to yeah. cut people off because yeah. you can get into that podcast, which just goes which on. Just and like on. you know, and, and then like, yeah, actually we... the other day I did it. It's like and at some point I'm like, we gotta keep yeah. this thing focused. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. That's now, your jo main job. Shout out to uh, at HR Caffey. Uh, who sent me a story about the Washington Nationals that isn't of this story, but was close. The okay. Washington Nationals are a baseball team. Right. She sent me a, a, about a guy who two pitches into the game puked his guts out Ooh. on the field. Ooh. One of the players. What did he was sick with? We don't know. Well, they're going to claim a stomach bug. He was pregnant. We're going to all assume he might have had a fun night. Okay. Right. Uh, right. Right. These are humans. Yeah. And he probably just went out, you know, like we do, like reckless all the time. You know, we drink and then the next day do things and like, yeah. you know, and then, but I, I guess it didn't work. So he just out of nowhere, just every camera mm. caught it. Just gross. It was pretty gross. So she sent me that one and I was like, that's very funny. That's not actually the story oh. we want to talk about. Oh, I don't know if you followed this, but last Wednesday, the U.S. Capitol was evacuated. Oh, Almost what? completely evacuated because there was a uh, serious threat of an unidentified plane over the top of the Capitol. Ooh. Brief of people started to be moved, but a, a real like get out of the Capitol. Everybody needs to get Jeez, out of the Capitol. turned out to be what? The Washington Nationals like to do a pregame uh, little fun thing. <laughs> little fun. Hey. They get in a plane. You've you've been to a Dodgers game, so you know beforehand yeah. they like to do all sorts of stupid things right. to just like kill your time. One yeah. of the things we like to do is we like to have the uh, US Army Golden Knights who parachute onto the field. Oh. A good time. Yeah. A great time. You might have forgotten to tell people that they were gonna do it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. And it happens to be right over the Capitol. It happens to be right over the Capitol. Oh geez. Because it's the Washington DC foot the uh, baseball team. Jeez. So uh yeah, they flew these That's hilarious. Over the Capitol. A full alert to US Capitol Police oh, and Congressional my staffers God. fleeing at around six thirty PM. Everybody was terrified. It didn't even really get picked up on because it was so embarrassing in retrospect Jeez. what it was. It was the these the stupid the amount of time i could spend ranting about the pre-game slash mid-game mm -hmm. like things they try to do at every single stadium to like entertain you and this one caused a full evacuation <laughs> that's crazy it's pretty crazy oh did they still get to do their little jump, no they did jump? it sounds like they weren't aware how serious it was Right. It sounds like they're they living their lives. They just they're like we're doing our flyover. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming the pilot was like, we told them. Yeah. And we told like, someone. and then we invade the Capitol. It's part of the fun. <laughs> yeah, part of the like, fun. A little throwback. Free party. Yeah. A little throwback to <laughs> earlier times. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And so they, yeah, they just. I think they took off. They thought it was normal. I'm sure there was somebody who was like, "Who is this?" And he was like, oh, "Yeah, we're flying a, you know, that thing where you're like, I'm supposed to be here." Right. You know? But do they do they like almost at, like does the defense missiles kick in? Are they about to? I attack imagine the, it came you know, close. Could be close. Yeah. Like uh oh, what unidentified? Yeah. Flying. Ooh, which jet looks plane. military, by the way. Oh really? Because it's, it's yeah, it's the, what the parachute out of. Whoa. Yeah. Especially if the guy thought they knew, and then he's just cracking jokes. They're like, "What is your purpose?" He's like, "We're just dropping bombs over hey, the field right hey, now." Yeah, yeah. They're like, what? Yeah. Wow. Full panic. Wow. Yeah. 
I started walking dogs past Dirks and Senate office building. People started screaming all at <gasps> once. They told me to turn around and get away as fast as possible. Jeez, that's serious. Yeah. People got really scared. Wow. We didn't even hear about this. We uh-huh. didn't really hear about it because it's a quick sports story that like went yeah. by and I was like. It's not really a sports story either. I mean, if they thought it was like well, something else. Okay. Okay, you know, I get it. Podcast. Yeah, yeah. you've heard the premise. Yeah, it's like it's usually sports. sports. Yeah, because it, sports is, cause it is because it is because it is a thing. If you watch a lot of sports, you get used to these like pregame. There's always a fly. There's usually a flyover, uh-huh. some sort of planes, occasionally a parachuter. Although I personally find the parachuter to be an unnecessary thing in general. Right. It's not. Imp- yeah. I know it's probably very hard to parachute. It doesn't look that impressive when they do no, it no it just looks like a little jump it looks like a little jump and then it looks like they just kind of land parasailing looks fun to me have you ever parasailed i have done none of these things okay personally have although you, i want to no. have you done it no but i think it looks fun it does seem fun it does seem fun. i feel like if i had i feel like i would do it if i was attached to someone i like the attached yeah. to someone type things yeah mm. if there's somebody with me who's like i'm gonna do the actual and you just yeah, I think a- the first time you usually have a person there I hope so I mean I think so I know my biggest fear is like if I did skydiving mm-hmm. that I just mess up the pulling the thing oh yeah you know like I think it's somewhere else like that's like yeah. one of those little things is something I might mess yeah. up I th- I'm so on board with that. Strap me to somebody while they do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And through anything, through any life activity. You strap pull me the <laughs> thing. You know about the backup thing. You know about the third thing. Like yeah, you, got, yeah. you know the signal to send. Like I want somebody with me who knows what we're, we're doing. We're all codependent. That's oh. what we're learning. <laughs> I think when I'm skydiving, yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Noah said any activity. Noah's like any activity. Yeah, any yeah I feel. I feel like yeah. If you strap me, like I'm a, a visual learner. If like yeah, me like, too. Like taxes. Same. Strap. I'll I'll be codependent then. Strap me in I and I'll too. watch you do it. Well, yeah. I just yelled at you about this prior to the show. He did. He, he did his own taxes like a lunatic. Taxes. Yeah, that's insane. Can't do it. Can't. I'm just learning. This is insane. Well, not insane. I I because I, I would hear people be like, oh. I got somebody, but now you're like, no, why are you doing it? Absolutely not. Right. Okay. You pay somebody a little bit of money Maybe. and you have a sh- one, a, like my biggest thing I told him is like somebody to point to and be like, he told me this was okay. Yeah. So yeah. if this was wrong, because you, it feels like it's all illegal. Right. The entire time that you're, <laughs> the entire time you're writing things off on the thing, they're yeah. like, yeah, they're like, yeah, you can write that off. Well, when you work yeah, with a tax guy, like, you, yeah, like, yeah, that, that like yeah, thing they do with like, like, do you ever, I'm oh, sorry, do you ever, <laughs> Go to restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, do you ever like, like when you drive your car, is it like always to work? And you're like, yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot it's of like the mostly time. to work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when you get your hair done, it's, it's for comedy, right? And you're like, I guess so. I mean, because you, you, you perform every night. So when you get your hair done, so you then go do a like, show. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, sure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, all right. Please, if the government comes, please don't let them know. <laughs> you said this. That's the first thing you get. And second is yeah. like, they tell you about stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That is genuinely right offable and explicably because yeah. you do read the government thing and it is like, you are allowed to write off mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. But there's a lot of stuff during baseball games. So they'll do the flyover thing. That's a classic. Yeah. There's the first pitch. Mm-hmm. Always a letdown. Mm-hmm. I've never thrown a first pitch, but I want to so bad. Yeah. They're not usually very good. Well, wow, it's, I mean, the pressure. Yeah. It's the a huge pressure. pressure. Yeah. If you're not a good, and then you got to get it there. Yeah. You're going to throw, I'm going to throw out my whole. Yeah. Yeah. That's rotator tough. Cuff. Yeah. I met Jess playing dodgeball and I threw the like game winning throw. My, I couldn't feel my shoulder for like Oh a my week. God. I threw yeah. it so hard. And I'm not. Do I, comics still play um softball together? They do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've never yeah. been invited. Oh. You should do it. I'll put you... <laughs> I don't know how to play very well, though. It's a casual thing. This is like so a fun. group that does Yeah, this? I'll send it to you. Oh. It's so fun. I'm not on the team either. I just also want to be clear about that. Oh, okay. But I'm showing okay. support for this for in general. You know about it. I know about it. I don't really it's know like about an, it. It's an open invitation kind of thing. Oh, so cool. It's, yeah, Good it's, to know. It's very fun. I used to play in a comic basketball Oh, game. yeah. That was very popular Gary Shanling used to do those, right? I wasn't in the Gary Shanley one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, mine was more, uh, you know, kind of people at my level. But Sarah Silverman would stop by every now and then. Oh, and that was always cool. It was very cool. It was also very like everybody was at like a. This is like six years. I mean, six seven years. So this is like right. for when I first came to LA. This is like mostly open micers. Maybe some like touring people. And it was like Sarah Silverman was like, "What are we doing?" Like, 
But it she was likes fun. Basketball. She was very cool. Yeah. I remember it. I it has endeared me to her for life. Aww. Mm-hmm. Has been like how cool she was at those things. That's cool. Because you know she yeah. could have come in and big shot it, but she like played. She was just fun to play with and like. Aww. It's those little things with those. Older, I know it is little things. Where you're like, yeah, hey, way to go. Halftime shows of basketball games. You're looking at a lot of. Uh, you're looking at a lot of dog events. A lot of the mm. dog things. You ever seen those? Do you ever come? You you don't ever see like. I'm really not into basketball. I don't like the sound of the sneakers. The squeaking. Yeah, I don't like squeaking. I very sensitive to sound. Uh huh. That drives me nuts. The that squeaking. is gonna be tough. <laughs> it's gonna take. You oh, I can't stand it. It's like chairs. Like you know, when you're at a restaurant, and they pull out the chairs. Uh-huh. Like just ugh. Same with squeaking. Same with squeaking. Squeak, 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 squeak. Yeah, That's yeah. all I think about with basketball. <laughs> How about hockey? Does hockey do anything for you? Nah. Nothing. No, I'm not into that. Nothing. I don't like the big man sports. I like the little men. You like the little men? Yeah, I like the little men that are agile and fast. Mm -hmm. Do you watch, like, do you get excited (laughs) about the Olympics? No. I don't, I'm just not that sports oriented, I guess. There's nothing wrong with it. I skating's okay. I, as a kid, I was really into that because it was kind of close to ballet, you mm-hmm. know, like the figure skating. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But now I look at them and I'm like, they're like twelve, and it's just kind of weird. You know? it's, it's tough. Kind of weird that they're all children. It's it's <laughs> tough. It's tough to watch like yeah. those kids. And I mean, this yeah, this year's figure skating was a debacle, second to none. Yeah, I, I actually watched it for ten minutes, and it was just all people crying. It was all crying. Yeah, you caught the end of the final event where everybody was crying and everybody was. Yeah, I think I the, all, I just kept seeing close ups of girls crying, and I was I didn't even see them skating. I just saw the crying. There was a lot of crying at the end it was a of a lot. The figure skating event this year was a debacle Intense. that then Russia really outshined with their little bullshit oh, with their okay. bullshit. So like they kind of stole the spotlight from what they did at the Olympics, which was terrible. Because they have like yeah. the whole thing where they're not allowed to compete at the Olympics, but they have like the Russian organization of athletes, which is like, mine, so that's just Russia. Yeah. Um, yeah. And these these girls were not happy with their coaches. I see. Oh, right. And we caught right. it on camera. It was, I see. Uh-huh, okay. Uh-huh. Figure skating's exciting. It can be exciting. Yeah. It's very intense. exciting. Yeah. You and watch gymnastics it. can be kind of fun to watch too. Gymnastics. Gymnastics can be yeah. great. What happened to Simone Biles this year? What? When Simone Biles couldn't do it. Yeah. She got the flippies. Yeah. That's something I learned about in real time. I never heard about the flippies. Mm-hmm. I didn't either. The flippies. There's something else going on there too, probably. It sounds like it was just the flippies. Oh, really? It sounds That's like it's it? a thing that can happen to gymnasts where it's like... They just can't. There was this... I, I read this long article that this girl wrote about like what it... She was like, I've, I'm have I'm a former gymnast. I will tell you what's happening to her. Mm. She was like, when you do a very complicated gymnastics thing... You basically can't think about it. You have to just do it. So you practice each step yeah. and then you put them all together. Yes. And you just have to be like, hit, and then you land. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. You can't think. Yeah. And they were like, every now and then you'll get the flippies, which is basically the yips is like what the baseball term is, which is like this thing where you just get in your head. And you're thinking about it. Yes. And yeah. unlike baseball where it's like if you get the yips, it's like, oh, you might throw the ball away. It's like you're flipping in the air. So if you're not focused, you'll kill you. I mean, you'll just wow, yeah. it's really you'll wipe dangerous. out. So yeah. that's why she was like, it was re- if she had that, she it's incredibly it. dangerous. You I have see. to like okay. work through it. So that's what happened. Mm. It was exciting. I was I I like learning new things. Yeah, I've never heard of good. <laughs> yeah, I like ping pong. I um I don't know if that counts as a sport. But Absolutely, played it as a, as a kid. Ping played pong is a ping pong is a badminton. Ping pong ping pong is a. Uh, People who are into gambling, ah. ping pong is a like midnight sport. Yeah, because it takes place. So if you're like obsessive with gambling, that's like huh. interesting. That's like something these people will like bet on ping pong at like two a.m. Mm. <laughs> it's like a real sign of addiction. Yeah, I think <laughs> I me. like the um, I like the racket sports. Okay, there's Rackets. nothing wrong. With the racket sports, right? Yeah, thank you. But the Washington Nationals flew the planes over them, oh, caused right. the entire capital to thing. <laughs> Wrapping it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back to this actual story. Back to the story. Yeah, yeah. People got scared. There's a whole investigation of what happened. FAA said it's very concerned, and they did say that they, um, yeah. I mean, Nancy Pelosi had to release a statement to the parent failure. I mean, it's it, it went big. Wow. Pelosi had to weigh in on this. It was a situation. Okay. Well, I'm glad that it was a false alarm. It was That's all a false alarm. A, yeah. It was That's just a good a, news. Just a bunch of guys jumping into a stadium for people who could have cared less 
Right. No one cares. For people filing to their seat being like, what's happening? <laughs> the entire capital evacuated. Wow. We'll be right back. No, oh, hey, during this break in the action, I have nothing else to say. I just want to give us a break in the action. Thank you for watching. Keep subscribing, rating. All right, we go. let's go back. And we're back. Erica Rhodes just let out a massive yawn <laughs> right before we came back on. <laughs> that's because my coffee ran out. Uh, See, that's what I happens. Know. I had initially promised her coffee and then yeah, and pulled then, it back. <laughs> and then he's like, uh, you're 15 minutes late. Never mind. And some would say that would have been reason for me to go get it. True. Because I did have time. You did have time. But I can tell you this. We debated a bunch in here. You did? Yeah. We yes. had a bunch of discussions about, do I have time to go get coffee? I probably don't have time to go mm -hmm. get coffee. Let's not worry about the coffee. Wait, maybe she's late. Maybe we should go get the coffee. A lot of discussion wow, about the coffee. Wow. Really, you know what? That means more than actually getting the mm -hmm. coffee. Just yeah. that you like took the time to talk about it so much. We did. We really yes. had a couple conversations that about really you getting coffee. That really means you care. You know? Erica, I know you're a huge fan of the podcast. <laughs> but it's a quick hit. These are quicker stories. I know you're okay. a huge fan of the podcast. Last yes. week, this is our first huge. of the new series follow-up story. Whoa. Because last week we talked about how during Minnesota Timberwolves games, yeah. fans continue to run on the court. Mm. We have had a woman glue herself to the court. Why? She's protesting animal rights. She's a, Animal rights. Yes, the owner of the team is... A, what? Why are they upset about with the animals? Uh, the owner of the team is uh, not... A hunter? He killed a, he killed a bunch of chickens, which is bad. But as I explained last week, animal rights people do not go well with sports bad combo they tend to yeah. protest ineffectively yeah. it never goes well not good. they screwed up so last week on the podcast we talked about how uh, a girl a woman tried to glue herself to the court uh -huh. as you can imagine incredibly ineffective uh was literally yeah. picked people uh, live broadcast they were like a woman has fallen no way she tried to glue herself like took four minutes for the broadcast to even figure out what had happened the next week <laughs> next game somebody attempted to chain themselves to the hoop this one took 30 seconds. <laughs> so as of last, so that's, and, and I said the, the, at the end of the last but what's, episode. What does that accomplish when they do that? What? Not a whole lot, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> They're just, I mean, it seems like a very odd way to protest. It does. It seems it, like it's not going to do a ton. No, not going to accomplish what they want. But they're clearly trying to Why make this Why don't they just thing. make a sign? Like, make a sign and we'll be on TV and Ooh. sign. We Save did a whole, the chickens or yep, whatever. We did a whole debate about this. The most, the best, really? most effective ways to go about it. Yeah. Uh, we came up with a bunch. We came up with, a big one was noise. You can make a lot of, no, you know, air horns spread throughout the stadium. Yeah. You could do this. You could do, signs is a great one. Signs. signs work all the time. You can get a sign up for probably... I'd bet two minutes before somebody's going to take you out. Yeah, mm -hmm. save the animals. Save the animals. the animals. Glenn Taylor did this, and I went through it last week. Glenn Taylor did a thing on his farm that should not have happened. It is, as always, the thing they're actually talking about is a good point. It's a real yeah. issue. But you don't even know what the issue is if they're just glued to the court. You're like, well, what's wrong with that crazy woman? Literally how, yeah. That's all you think. Well, it's a crazy woman. Then again, a crazy woman now chains herself to the thing. What are we doing? No. Or let some chickens run onto the court or something. I mean, we talked about something. I mean, we had some great ideas. With cats. Yeah. We, we could, you could have done all sorts of things. Yeah. yeah. Things you could do to cause trouble. They got to get more creative, these animal people. They got, well, and just so many different ways to go about it. We came yeah. up with a thousand ways. I think you've yeah. come up with some good ones. I mean, just off the top of your head. You're like, yeah. if you want to screw things up, you could do a write bunch a song, of things. Write a song about it. Write a song. You do all you know, sorts do of things. Do a TikTok video about it. But mm -hmm. I don't know, chaining yourself or go any. It just seems silly. It's just a great way to make a bunch of people go, "Hey, uh, fuck those people," and then you've lost the. Then yes. what is the point? What's the yes. point of any of this? Then you seem crazy. You seem crazy, and the thing they're talking about, as I went through last week, is a real thing that happened. That was not good. Yeah. And the yeah. guy should. I think that, like they have a good of like he gets this much in federal subsidies. He should donate that to animal rights. And I was like, that seems smart. Yeah. He's a billionaire. Totally fair. Right. But instead, we're chaining ourselves thing. So at last episode, I said, hey, I think this story might still be going. These people seem quite adamant. Really? So game three, nothing happened. Okay. But it was released afterwards. A woman tried. She didn't get, she didn't get close. Oh. But she tried. Okay. But game four. So you think something's going to happen? Something happened. Oh, what happened? So... You were really wanting me to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was building a little suspense. Yeah, you know, no, trying to tell suspense. a story. Yeah. Trying to tell a little tale. Good job. Over here. Hey, I'm a great host. Everybody yeah, talks about it. <laughs> so what happened, Danny? So um, there's two girls. They come to the second row. Mm -hmm. A security guard. If, if you watch in replay, a security guard is like this at them. Okay. Like this. 
I believe woman, but it was hard to tell because it's far away, mm-hmm. spotted these two white women and just were like, it seems like them. One of them takes out her phone to record. She's watching her. The other one, middle of play, jumps out on the court. This security guard tackles her so fast. Oh, my gosh. Gets her down. Then they tackle the other girl. They will, st- Game oh still has to stop, though. This happens on live TV. And you hear like the announcers being like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, you gotta be kidding. <laughs> Come on. How many times? Not again. How Not again. So they tackle her. The most interesting part was as they were taken off, they had ref uniforms on. Hmm. So the thought was I think she was going to try to insert herself as a ref into the game That's and like creative. see how long she could. Look. A little more creative. Yeah, a little better. Yeah. We're getting there. We, uh, <laughs> She got caught before she got in there, but she... she that would have been funny to it pretend to be a ref. It would have been potentially the most effective one. Yeah. But this security guard, I mean, really the good. speed of this tackle mm-hmm. is mind-blowing. So we don't right. know what it would have been, but she was going to, we think, be a they ref. They knew there was going to be some... They knew... Oh, they've been... At I this mean, point, they're like, oh, we just always need a security I mean, person. I'm sure everybody listens mm-hmm. to the podcast and pointed out, and I, as I pointed out, like, hey, we got to be a better security. Like, they, yeah, yeah. They're not stopping. I called this last Good week. Good thing they heard the podcast and, and that's what prompted the better security. Certainly the security guard. You could tell yeah. that she was like, look for white women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep an eye on these white women sneaking up. They just kind of sneak their way up. Nobody questions. They just want to get on TV. I don't know what they're trying to do, but yeah, anyway, well, I'll tell you this: they didn't listen. To, I'll tell you who didn't listen to the podcast: the animal rights people, because they're keeping it going. Ugh. That's the first story. Okay. The Jazz released their uniforms for next year. The the who? The Jazz. Utah Jazz, the basketball team. If you don't oh, know sports, thank you. Utah Jazz. Mm-hmm. Erica. Yeah. I just sent it to you. If we can, oh. we're going to try to I'll try to put it up on the screen. But if not, it'll be in the description. Mm-hmm. Take a look at how absolutely horrific these these jerseys are. No, I'll send it to you also. Yes. Get you in on the fun. It's ironic. My, my sister just sent me a recipe for a salad at the same time. A recipe for a salad? Mm-hmm. Cucumber salad. Ugh. <laughs> Yuck. So that's, that's Noah's. You don't like cucumber? No, he's reacting to the oh, jerseys. No. Oh, oh, I, he's I, focused on the on the um, on, <laughs> on the, the podcast, podcast that we're doing. I'm obsessed with cucumber. <laughs> As a side note, I love cucumber, but it's these uniforms are disgusting. You know, twenty two is my lucky number. Okay. So we've got something going on. <laughs> Erica likes the number. Um, I I don't mind the black one with the yellow lettering. Interesting. I don't mind that one. That, I, I I'll say that's the least bothersome. Yeah, the I other think two. The, the middle ugh, not good. And, it, and keep in mind, there's years of discussion before this is released. This They're is so simple, though. There's nothing that exciting about them. Nothing. Black, white, and yellow. And yet somehow bad. The the lines around the neck, like the the first one, the lines around the neck and then the arms makes it. They just look like pit stains, like on a on a white shirt. Absolutely, very good point. It that's gonna gross. look like that's gonna look like everybody has a pit stain. Yeah, the white. Yeah, and oh, and the yellow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks the black terrible. Ones are okay. They should just do the black and yellow. Like, they don't need the other two. Eric, what would you do if you were designing a jersey? Utah Jazz. Let's keep my Utah word. Jazz. So, you know, he, as you can see, there's a note element if you want to play in the jazz world. I see. Yeah, there's no, there's no jazziness in these. They don't remind me of jazz. They don't remind mm. me of jazz. No. I think I would form. do very thin. Well, I guess they have to do lettering you can see. Yes and no. I mean, I don't love the twos. The twos look weird to me. Yes, very blocky. Mm. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I, I think I would choose better, a better font. You go better font. Better font. font. Maybe bigger letter, bigger lettering. Would actually. you throw any? De- would you throw a design on there at all? Yeah, I'd have like a little saxophone. Okay. Little sax. Now we're cooking. Yeah. A little sax underneath. Really little, like maybe the two would turn into a sax. Would you throw little notes coming out of this the saxophone? No, the no. notes are a bit tacky. On the, it's on a tacky. The nose. That's yeah. a little too but a little much. Little saxophone might <laughs> be cool. Stupid. We'll cut, that that was stupid. <laughs> cut that out of the thing. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> now we're thinking of like music school, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I don't know. A sax might be cool. I don't know. These are pretty boring. It's just nothing. It's truly, it takes a lot for me to yeah. react to a jersey 
But I was like, this might be the worst jersey I've seen in quite some can time. Can you send a jersey you like that just so I can see the difference? Can you just pick one out that I can be Ooh. like, oh, that's an exciting one? I'm going to do it after the break. Oh. I'm going to send you one just so we yeah. don't make this the most uninteresting okay. segment in oh, podcast no, history. Okay. Oh, that part was great. No, yeah, up yeah. until the, up until me me having to send you. Let me look it out. Yeah, real yeah, quick. yeah, yeah. Good point. You get to watch that moment. I'd like to just know the like what was the mm-hmm. cool. Yes, jersey. but I'll send you some good ones. There's some, there's some good, ones. good jerseys yeah. out there. Oh, some good ones. I'll do one final story. Okay. Um, I've had this one for a while. Well, just on a side note, Wimbledon banned all Russian players from 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 uh, playing this year That's at Wimbledon. That's a little bit and it's ridiculous. A, it's a it's, right. It's tough to say. Yeah, it is. It's tough, tough to, to say. say. On one hand, you're like, these are the kind of things that really hurt, and these are the kind of things that make people, you know, in that country go, hey, this we're we're being removed from the world. True. So that's very yeah. effective. Like, yeah. And I will tell you that Russia loves sports. And when they get removed from certain things, that's really tough. So on yeah, one hand, you the have the only a, thing I just, I always feel bad for the individual. That's the life. other argument. You know, it's like yep. the individuals are just, I mean, you put These your people. whole life to this. And mm-hmm. then because your country is doing, you know, something you're not even part of, it's like. It's a real, this is why I love sports is because yeah. sports has a lot of issues that come up where you're like. Political stuff. But it isn't, and it's not obvious. Like, you know what I mean? When you go on Twitter, it's just like, it's like, there's so many, well, it's not obvious, right? Because on, we, there's two different hands. On one hand, you're like, yeah, ban them because you're teaching, Russia has to learn these repercussions. Yeah. On the other hand, you're like, but these are individuals who have spent their whole life becoming great at tennis. Yeah. And now they don't get to compete because of something they didn't do. That's what I see. And so it's, it's that balance that I love. I love issues like this where I'm like, oh, I don't know the right answer versus like when you go on Twitter and it's just like. This guy punched this person in the face, and you're like, yeah. I mean, I just, feel, I think I feel torn about about sports being politicized. You know, well, like, join join the rest of the country. Yeah, because uh, yeah. <laughs> on one hand, yeah, that's the whole thing is that's people thing. don't like it, but then on the same hand, sports lives in the world we live in, yeah. So it has to have these moments of like, but we can't just pretend. And right, you know, look, I, I the Black Lives Matter movement that happened like in the bubble during basketball playoffs. Yeah, what that did as far as like awareness what lebron and like those guys did was yeah probably made more people have to be aware of what was happening than anything else really they were so big the fact that they were like we're not playing unless you have black lives matter on the court do this stuff you're gonna tr- take it seriously like you know for somebody like me it's like yes i hopped on that early yeah but it's like for others it's like it was effective right sports it can be a real movement really make true. change but yeah a, that's true but a fine fun, fun final story ryan yeah. hartman nhl player plays hockey don't worry about it okay he got fined for uh flipping off another player evander oh. kane flipped him off on on the ice not supposed to do that yeah. he gets a fine people found that uh, immediately after he got that fine he received a venmo from evander kane's ex-wife for that amount of money <laughs> <laughs> wait 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 a second who paid off who? The player who got fined, the person who he flipped the bird to, that person's ex-wife paid him being like, thank you for, for, for flipping him off. Oh, that's hilarious. That's funny. Oh, that is so funny. That's a good time. I like that Baller story. Room. Uh-huh. Baller that's room. really cool. That's a good move from her. We that's all have really was, funny. Way to go. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. We like that story. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> How much was it? Do you know? No. So I feel like sports fines can be pretty... Pretty heavy? It's solid. I mean, it was probably a couple grand. Yeah. Hockey's a little lighter than Five most. grand? She was like, thanks. She's like, yeah. It is interesting. Good on you. In a sport where wow. they can fight. Yes. That flipping off is where they draw the line. Because it's, mm-hmm. it's all about um, broadcast rights. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. It's all about stupid shit like that there's so many rules in sports that have nothing to do with like the league mm-hmm. the league takes so much flack and they're like we don't care yeah they're flipping it's the, the network you can't yeah. air a, a middle finger on tv right. although let me tell you wrestling these days it's bad. everybody's flipping each other off really and i don't know they, they must just be paying a maybe ton of fines. they want them to be <laughs> yeah maybe they want them to be on t they need they're trying to help the ratings or something smart could be yeah. a lot of I I like noticed it like a year ago. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like once mm. an episode. Now it's like all the time. All the time. Wow. What are we doing? Yeah. Inappropriate. I'm, I don't yeah. care for it. <laughs> I like my I like my professional wrestling. Do they do that in golf? Flip each other off? 
No, golf is such a boring sport. <laughs> well, that would be fun if they suddenly started to. It would be great. Right? There's, there's <laughs> get really Jordan, rude. Um, no, not Jordan. Uh, Brooks Kopka and... This is everything but the scores with Danny Jollis. And welcome back. That's exactly when we wanted to end that last segment. We planned it. We wanted the camera to overheat at that moment. I think you missed me not knowing the name of the golfer, so I'm actually pumped about it. Um, what a wonderful episode. Erica, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Um, I am going to record my next album at Acme Comedy Club. Hey, let's go. Company. What, a great, what a great club. Yeah, in Minnesota, uh, June 15th to 18th. That's so exciting. I know. Here's I the best think, club in the game. I think I need to clubs. write about 10 more minutes of comedy to be ready for it. Okay. An easy 10. An easy 10. Nothing hard. No. I am, uh, this isn't yet fully official, but I will say to people, if you live in LA, June 4th, I will be filming my next special. Very exciting. I don't yet have the full contract on the place, but I think we know where it's going to be. It's going to happen. But... This weekend, you can catch me in Washington, D.C. at a synagogue, and uh, you know, you can catch me at all sorts of stupid shows all throughout L.A., but June 4th, really marked that one down as count. That's my only plug. And please, share this podcast, comment, subscribe. We already talked about this. Noah? Uh, check out my YouTube special, Deep Breaths, mm -hmm. that is out right now, and also, uh, if you are in San Diego this weekend, I will be taping there this weekend. So oh, let's go. to those shows. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, with Don't Tell Comedy. Don't Tell Comedy. Don't Tell Secret Sets. Don't Tell Secret Sets. Yeah. And that's the show, minus one final thing. What? So this is, I don't like your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start by saying that. I don't like the way you said what to me. <laughs> that, was my, that was my excited what, <laughs> what? So this is three shots, three shots of glory we call this, you get, uh, oh. slash the new name. You got three shots sitting down oh at gosh. this hoop. Okay. We, have, we were deciding what is gonna happen when, so the, we haven't yet had somebody hit it. Oh, but no one gets it? I can do it all the time. I did it earlier. It's not hard to do. First try. Oh my gosh. Uh, first try. Just, I was like, let me just show you it's doable. Okay. Uh, but if you get three shots at it, if we do, I don't know if we're going to potentially put up headshots of everyone who hits hits one. Wow, you should. I think that'd be kind of fun, at least out of the gates. I don't know how I feel about my wall in my office being covered in headshots at all times. Harper, what are we doing? Um, kind of funny, though. Kind of funny. Yeah. That's, a, that's the initial idea. Yeah. So you get three shots. You got to be sitting down into this hoop. Okay. Ready? Okay. You can put down the microphone. I'll, I'll announce it. I did. It did occur to me afterwards that for the audio listeners, this uh, potentially is not the most exciting. So I'm going to try to do a little bit more play-by-play. -play. All right. So Erica lines it up. Looks confident. <laughs> a little nervous. Okay. Okay. One. So the first show, for those of you listening, the first shot was there. Very, a little low. <laughs> a little low, but, but we're getting a feel for it. Oh, that was my fault. That was a bad throw. That's on me. That's on me. So I have to sit, huh? You gotta sit. You gotta sit. That's part of the key. Should get yourself a little bump. That's smart. Whoa. <laughs> All sorts of movements in her arm. <laughs> so she's she's really getting the arm. She has shoulder moving. Oh, that was a very close shot. Very close. We hit backboard there. Final shot. This is it. All the money. <laughs> She's trying to cheat as much as she can and get as high as she can. <laughs> Borderline no longer sitting, but. <laughs> this is it. Oh, ah. man. Oh, no and that's the show. We'll see you next week. You're a number one fan, so you know the stats. Heard all the pundits talking, so you know enough of that. Maybe it's time to hear some crazy folks chat about all the other stuff that's behind the net. But maybe you don't care about playing ball And you want to hear the gossip where the big goes small Maybe it's time to hear some funny folks talk About what goes on when the batter don't walk Maybe you'd like to hear a little more Maybe you don't even care about sports Either way, go on and buckle up your shorts Cause this is everything but the scores with Danny Jollis Yeah, doggy. <laughs>